Hi students, this is the first video on uh, from section nine, the last section in the book. And this, of course, is the first lecture for week eight, the last one. This is on the area of polygons. And let's go over to the iPad. So unit 38, um, the first of four sections in section nine, um, section nine deals with um, areas and volumes. And we start out with areas of what are called polygons. The objective is to explain what a polygon is. We get to that right away down below and identify examples of polygons and describe how to determine the area of squares, rectangles, parallelograms, triangles, trapezoids, pentagons, octagons and hexagons. So a polygon is a two-dimensional shape that has straight sides. It may have as few as three sides. And when it does, that's called a triangle where tri means three, or it can have more sides. Um, other common polygons beyond triangles are squares, rectangles, things called trapezoids, parallelograms, pentagons, hexagons, and octagons. We're going to look at um, finding the area of all sorts of these figures. Um, a regular polygon is one where all sides are equal in length and all angles, internal angles, are equal. Examples are equilateral triangles, squares, and hexagons. They're all regular polygons. Um, a shape with straight sides of different lengths or corners of different angles is called an irregular polygon. And we will not be looking at areas of irregular polygons in this unit. So we start out by looking at um, a square. A square is a polygon with four sides, all of whom uh, all lengths are, all sides are of equal length and all internal angles, there are four of them, are 90 degrees. And the area, formula for the area is just the square of the length of one of the sides. Since all four sides are equal, uh, pick any side that you like. A rectangle is another four-sided uh, polygon. The length, uh, it has two sides that are of length L and two sides that are of length W, where L and W are not equal to each other. If they were, it would just be another square. In a rectangle, the area is just the product of length times width. So an example 38-1, we have a rectangle with 37 millimeters for a length and 20 millimeters for a width. So the area is 37 millimeters times 20 millimeters. The arithmetic 37 times 20 gives you 740. The units will be square millimeters or millimeters squared. All the areas have uh, whatever the numerical result is, the units will always be squared. A parallelogram, also a four-sided signal um, polygon where the opposite sides are parallel to each other the difference between a parallelogram and a rectangle is that it started out being a rectangle, but it looks like uh, the top got pushed aside a little bit. And in a parallelogram, we're still interested in what we call the base, which is equal to one of the, uh, what we used to call the length when this thing was a, a rectangle. And that, by the way, is also equal to the opposite side in length, since by, by definition of parallelogram, the opposite sides are of equal length. So this side and this side are also of equal length. But the other thing we're interested in is the height. Now, the height in a parallelogram is not equal to the length of any of the sides. We have to find the height by constructing a perpendicular to the base that goes all the way up to the other side. And the length of that perpendicular is then called the height. 
any area of a parallelogram is then equal to the length of the base times the height. So it's very much like a rectangle, except that um, you have this odd thing called the height. And that's due to the fact that it's uh, started out as a rectangle, but got pushed aside on one of its edges a little bit. 38.2 is an example of a uh, rectangle, a uh, parallelogram. It has a base of 2.25 inches and a height that's 0.9. The height is, again, the distance between um, the base and the opposite side. It can be done with a, a perpendicular, drawn that way. If this were the perpendicular, it would have um, the height, we would call it H if we were using a symbol, but since we already know it's 0 0.90 inches, we know that height, the length of that line would be 0 0.90 inches. And to find the area, again, it's base times height, which would be 2.25 times 0.9. Numerically, you get 2.025. And the units, since we're working with um, units of inches, the area will be in square inches. I N with a square above it like that. Triangle, again, has three sides. And the area of a triangle is, um, to find the area of a triangle, we take one of the three sides and we designate it the base. And you can pick any of the three sides. Uh, many times we just take the, what we, looks like the bottom side, depending upon which way the triangle is oriented, we say, okay, that's the base. And then to find the height, which is this dimension here, we again construct the perpendicular to the base, but the perpendicular has to go to the vertex, the opposite vertex from the base. And the distance of that line is the height of the triangle. So if you have a triangle that looks very odd because of, of the way that it's, well, the shape of the triangle is very odd, and you have a base that you, you pick as that side, then there's no way you can construct a perpendicular to the base that goes to the opposite vertex because the opposite vertex is pushed way outside the bounds of where the base is at. But the height is still defined as the distance from where the base would be if it were extended up to that opposite vertex. That is still the height of the triangle. And the formula is the base times the height divided by two. Now, some justification for why that's true might come if we were to start with a rectangle, draw a real rough rectangle here. And the shorter lengths would be the heights of the rectangle. The area of the rectangle would equal the base times the height. Now, if I draw a, a line between opposite vertices diagonally across the rectangle like that, I get two triangles. Each of those triangles has half the area of the original rectangle because it's a mirror image around that diagonal line that I've drawn. So the area of each of the triangles is gonna be half the area of the rectangle, which is the base times the height. And that's the formula that we gave you up there. So that's a little bit of an argument for why the area of a rectangle is a formula for the area of a rect uh, triangle is what it is. So example 38-3, here's a triangle with a base of 1.938 and a height of 1.625. So we plug them into the formula that the area is one half the base times the height. So you're multiplying one half times 1.938 times 1.625. On a calculator, you'd get a numerical answer of 1.575 and perhaps more decimal digits beyond that. 
And since the units are inches of the uh, dimensions of the triangle, the area will be in square inches. The trapezoid. The trapezoid is a four-sided shape in which two sides are parallel and the other two sides are not parallel. And there's an example shown down below. So in a trapezoid, we're used to calling one side base one and the opposite side base two. Usually we call the longer side base one, but it doesn't matter which you call base one and which you call base two. The height of the uh, trapezoid is again found by constructing a perpendicular to the base up to the opposite base. And the length of that, um, that perpendicular is the height of the trapezoid. And the area for a trapezoid is one half times the sum of the bases multiplied by the height. And if you look at just the part of the formula that's composed of one half times the quantity so, uh, base one plus base two, that's an average of the two bases. And if you look at it that way, um, you get a formula that looks very much like, again, the area of a rectangle, except of course, this is not a rectangle. But just looking at the two bases as having an average, if you were to construct a, um, a rectangle that had the average um, base one plus base two over two, and the height equal to whatever the height is, the formula for this rectangle would be uh, the height times the average of the uh, of the bases, which is base one plus base two over two. And that's exactly what your formula for the area of a trapezoid is. Example 38-4 is a trapezoid. Base is 1.60 and 0 0.50 in inches and a height of 1.25. So applying the formula for the area, one half the base one plus base two times the height. Um, doing the arithmetic, we get, uh, let's see, well, we get 1.31. And since we're in inches, the units are gonna be square inches. And for this one, I thought it would be um, kind of behoove us to look at the calculator keystrokes. So given that the formula is one half the sum of the bases times the height, and that you can, you can mix the order of multiplication and division since they're at the same level in the, uh, the hierarchy of uh, precedence of operators. You can key it into the calculator like this. Open parenthesis, sum of the bases, 1.60 plus 0 0.50. Close parenthesis, times the height, divided by two. And then enter. And if you push this into your calculator, you'll get 1.31 and perhaps some more digits, maybe not. Um, and then you affix the units of square inches and you're done. So that's what it would look like doing that on a calculator. Um, you could do it, uh, put that divide by two in another place. In fact, you could put um, one divide by two times and then open parenthesis 1.60 plus 0 0.50 close parenthesis times 1.25 equals and you should get um, exactly the same result because out here in front you've got one divided by two which is the fraction one half which you're then going to multiply or you could put the divide by after the 1.60 plus 0 0.50, any place you want to put it. Since you're working with uh, multiplication and division, the, uh, the order of those operators doesn't matter. What does matter, of course, is that you have to take the addition of the two bases and put them in parentheses to get your calculator to add those up first. Those must be done first before you break it apart uh, or break it away to do the additions and multiple uh, divisions, multiplications and divisions. 
Uh, moving on to some more complex figures. Pentagons, hexagons, and octagon, octagons. Yeah, pentagon is a five-sided figure, five-sided shape. Hexagon has six sides and an octagon has eight sides. And regular pentagons, hexagons, and octagons are those shapes where all sides are equal in length. So here's figures of them below. So if we start out with the pentagon, and we divide it up into five triangles. Divided it up into five triangles. And the strategy behind doing this is that if we can find the area of one of those triangles, all we need to do is multiply it by five and we will get the area of the Pentagon. So the first step is to notice that if I draw a circle right around the center of the pentagon. That circle has 360 degrees in it. So each one of the five triangles takes up one fifth of the total 360 degrees or 360 divided by five gives you 72 degrees. So if I take just one of those triangles and pull it apart here, and furthermore, I'm gonna divide it in half by making a, these are, by the way, isosceles triangles. They might be equilateral, but we don't know. But we are guaranteed they're isosceles triangles because the distance, since this is a regular um, pentagon, the distance from the center out to, uh, to the vertices, the adjacent vertices, are all going to be the same length. So since they're all the same length, um, I can construct a uh, perpendicular bisector of the base and the length of that bisector, which makes a right angle, um, is going to give me the height of that triangle. And since I divided the triangle in half with that bisector, it means that this angle is one half of the 72 or 36. Now what I'm gonna need to find the, um, the area of that triangle is I need um, base and height because uh, one half the base times the height is the area of the, um, the smaller triangle. Or actually, if I find uh, the, the entire base, one half that base times the height is the area of the full triangle. Now, looking still now at the half triangle here with the angle of 36 degrees at that vertex, um, since we're looking at that one triangle, the length of that side is the length of the outside of the pentagon divided by two since it's half. See that line not only bisects the vertex angle, but it also bisects the, um, the base of this triangle. So its length is S over two. Now we can write an equation that helps us find the height of the triangle, given that we know the angle is 36 degrees, the side that's opposite is S over two, and the height is the side adjacent to that 36 degrees. So since we, we know the length of the side opposite, we're looking for adjacent, that naturally steers us towards writing formula for the tangent of 36 degrees, which is gonna be um, the side S over two divided by H, or just putting the H in the denominator, that's S over twice H, and that gives us uh, when we solve for H, that gives us a formula for the height of that triangle. So the area of the entire triangle now is one half the length of the base, which is S over two, times the height, which is S divided by twice the tangent of 36. Doing a, a little bit of multiplication, we get that the area of that triangle is the square of the length of the side of the pentagon divided by four times the tangent of 36. So area is five times the side squared over four times tangent 36 degrees. This is a formula where we can calculate everything except for the length of the side. So if we use our calculators, we can calculate five divided by four times the tangent of 36 degrees, 
And when we do that, we'll get approximately 1.72. So this formula area is 5s squared over 4 tangent 36 degrees is can be approximated as 1.72 times the length of the side of the Pentagon. So we did a full development of the area of a Pentagon. We, we won't do the same for the hexagon or the octagon. I'll just give you those formulas. But what I want you to remember is that this formula is exact. This is an approximation. 1.72s is an approximation. And for a lot of applications, it is, it's good enough. If we do a hexagon, the result is the area is the three times the square root of three divided by two multiplied by the square of the length of a side of the hexagon. That's the exact formula. And an approximation to that is 2.60 times the square of the length of the side. And for an octagon, the exact formula is two times the quantity, one plus the square root of two multiplied by S squared, where S again is the length of the side of the octagon. And an approximation to that is 4.83 times S squared. So now we're gonna jump ahead to some of the practice problems. Um, here's a hexagon. And here's the exact formula for that. And here's some calculator keystrokes. And by the way, here's another exact formula for that. So we're going to use some calculator keystrokes. Um, that's three. And then second x squared, which gets you the square root symbol. And now you're going to enter three because you want um, three times the square root of three. In parentheses has to be there to separate it from the operator division by two, and then times 20, because in this hexagon, the length of the side is 20 millimeters. And since this is a regular hexagon, all the sides are 20 millimeters squared. Enter, and you get an answer back that is, oh, I don't know what the answer is. Let me very quickly work that one through so that you'll have something to compare with. So three, uh, second square root three, end parenthesis, divide by two times 20 X squared, enter. I got an answer of 1.2. I know, I'm sorry, one, zero, three, nine, and then point two, three, and some more digits. And since we're working in millimeters, the area is going to be millimeters squared. So there's an example of hexagon. And also, this is an example of using the exact formula for finding it. And since you've got a calculator, uh, there's really no reason to use the approximate formula other than you use just a couple of button pushes less. Okay, here's a Pentagon. Here's the exact formula. And this is one of the two exact formulas. If we and let's see, the Pentagon has 9.46 inches per side. So on your calculator, the numerator, it would be five times 9.46 squared divided by, and now open parenthesis because we're going to put um, a couple of operations here. We're gonna have a multiplication operation and then a tangent. So four times tangent 36, we need um, an end parenthesis for the tangent because the tangent gave us an open parenthesis. So we have to close that. And then we need an end parenthesis for the open parenthesis that we uh, put in there for the denominator. We find the equals and I got 
inches squared are going to be the units. And now as an example, here's the approximate formula for the area of a pentagon. And on the calculator, a lot fewer keystrokes, I admit it. 1.72 times 9.46 x squared equals, and you get an answer of 153.93. Notice it's pretty close to 153.97. It's off by only four hundredths from the exact calculation. That's actually the exact calculation rounded to the nearest hundredth. I should be clear about that. And here's an octagon. Here's the exact formula. The octagon has a side of 2.80 inches. And that's all we need to calculate the area of the octagon. So using the exact formula, the numerator is 2 times 2.80x squared, and then divide by. And here we don't need parentheses since um, the denominator is just tangent of 22 and a half. So we enter tangent 22 and a half, enter, get an answer of 37.855, the units inches squared, since we're, we're working in inches. The approximate formula is 4.83 times the square of the side. So on the calculator, that would be 4.83 times 2.80x squared. Calculator gives back an answer of 37.867. And the units are square inches. And again, we're off a little bit in the hundredth place. Actually, if we go off to the thousandth place, we're off by 12 thousandths between the exact and the approximate. And again, the exact has been rounded to the nearest thousandth. So that, once you round it, of course, you're no longer exact. But that does illustrate that when you round it to the same decimal place, the approximate formula will give you a little different answer than the exact one. I'm going to take a look at one of the homework problems. This is number one. This is um, a plate, an octagonal plate, and it has a keyhole cut in the middle of it. We're going to make 70 of these plates shown in the drawing, and they're going to be acid washed on both sides. And the amount of acid is based on the total surface area to be washed. So that's kind of a cue that not only the side that we're looking at is going to be acid washed, but the opposite side is going to be acid washed as well. So keep that in mind. So compute the surface area of 70 of these plates to the nearest square inch. Nearest square inch, let me underline that in red, nearest square inch. And then deduct the area of the keyhole shape that is cut out of the plates. And then there's a hint, the keyhole is made up of two trapezoids. And I've drawn a red line through the middle here that actually shows how it's broken up into two trapezoids. Those are actually two identical trapezoids. They're, they're mirror images of each other. So they will have the same area, meaning we only have to find the area of one trapezoid and then multiply it by two. And I'm going to use, uh, since we're only rounding this to the nearest square inch, I'm going to use the approximate uh, formula for the octagon. And that is 4.83 times S squared. So since S is 5.44 inches, the keystrokes are 4.83 times 5.44 X squared equals, and you get 142.937 square inches. I know we're going to round that later, but let's keep it um, all the way out to the thousandth place for now. Uh, the area of one of the trapezoids is the sum of the bases divided by two multiplied by the height. Now we're given the dimensions of the two bases. We're given that the smaller dimension or smaller base is 1.69 inches. The larger base is 3.84 inches and the height is 3.75 inches. So to calculate the area of 
one of the trapezoids is 1.69 plus 3.84, and that has to be inside parentheses times 3.75, and then divided by 2 equals 10.8, that's 369, and that's the area of one trapezoid. To find the area of two trapezoids with the answer 10.369 currently on your calculator second line, just push times 2, enter, and it will multiply that by 2 and give you 20.738 square inches. So that's the area of two trapezoids, which is equal to the area of the keyhole that's been cut into this octagon. So the total surface area of one side of this octagon is the area of the octagon, 142.937, minus the area of the keyhole, which is 20.738, and I got 122.199, and that's for one side. But we need two sides, so we multiply that by two, taught by just pushing buttons times two enter, and we get 244.398, and that's the area of two sides of an octagon with the keyhole cut in it. Now, furthermore, we're making 70 of these. So we need to take the area front and back of one of these octagons with the keyhole in it and multiply it by 70. So with the 244.398 still as the previous answer on your calculator, just push times 70, enter, and you get um, 17,107.86. Um, and the units are going to be square inches but that's going to round to 17,108 square inches. And then that's the number that's going to be used. We don't know what the factor is, but that's the number that's going to be used to determine how much acid will be required to wash front and back of 70 pieces of this part. And that brings this video to an end. I will see you for the next one.